It's all in your hands. <laughs> you made my day. Well, I remember Jerry Roberts used to like sit here and go like this when people would be talking during games when there were basketball during times when there were basketball games. Well, you can't do this, right? Yeah. Huh? Now I'm going to say go like this. All right, call the uh, Weathersfield uh, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting January 4th, 2023 to order. Um, Ryan, could you take the attendance, please? Absolutely. Chair Roberts. Here. I am here. Mr. Hammer. Here. Commissioner Hughes. Commissioner Oikel. Mr. Dean. Here. Uh, Commissioner Homicki. Here. Commissioner Edwards. Here. Commissioner Vieira. Drake. Van Bruni. Here. Thompson. Here. Okay, five regular members and one alternate, seat the alternate. Um, we have two public hearings tonight. The way it's gonna work is that we'll take them in order. Um, first thing that happens is the applicant comes up, gives us the name and address for the record, tells us what they wanna do. Um, may have some conversation back and forth with the commission. Uh, once we're done with that, we'll open it up to members of the public, if any, who want to comment on the application. Um, following that, we'll have the applicant come back. There may be some additional questions or discussion with the commission. Um, if after that, we think we have enough information to make the decision, we'll close the public hearing and go into deliberations. If for some reason, um, you know, there's additional information we're looking for or questions that haven't been answered, we may continue the hearing. Um, but you'll know what's happening as it's happening. So the first item, 3.1 public hearing 2128-22Z, ShopRite Hardware seeking a modification to special permit 1659-09Z in accordance with section 5.3 a10 of the Weathersfield zoning regulations for outdoor merchandise sales at 574 Salestine Highway. So if you want to come up to the microphone and uh, introduce yourself and tell us what it is that you're looking for. Talking to this? Oh yeah, okay. Okay, so um, my name's Joe. I'm from ShopRite Hardware. And what I was looking for was I had a um, permit for many years to put stuff out front, but it was only for a certain amount of stuff. So I'm here tonight to ask if I can put more stuff out and just keep it very neat and orderly and respectable. So it's not necessarily sales. I'm not gonna be doing sales outside because um, that's what it sounded like. It's just um, merchandise that's outside um, for display, I guess. You know, sales take place inside. Right. Yeah, I, I think that was... So it's least. not like a flea market outside kind right. of thing. Right, yeah, it's just putting things outside, and the original approval said no more than three different types of products yep. shall be placed on display at any one time. And I guess the, the question I would have is, you know, Rather than saying, I want to have 13 different items, is there some kind of seasonality or well, physical I, limits? I mean, what's more important or most important, I would think, uh, I mean, whatever you guys say, let me know. But I think what's most important is that it looks neat, it's nice, it's respectable. Nobody, I'm not doing anything that will endanger anybody. Um, um, and uh, keeping it neat and looking nice. We want it to look nice in our town. And I mean, um, it's usually um, it's usually just seasonal stuff. So in the summer or spring times, you know, we'll have different types of dirts out there, probably some wheelbarrows, maybe even some of those colorful chairs that I'm sure everyone's seen. Um, and we put them outside. Um, in the winter, 
Not much at all. Like now there's not, maybe we just have some garbage cans out against the building. Um, but more or less, I guess, there is no way on earth I'm going to put more than what I've had in the past out there. So it's not like I'm asking for to do something over and above. I'm just asking to kind of keep it the way it's, everyone's seen it for the last probably year and um, be respectable with it and safe and orderly and nice and clean. Um, why I think I'm here tonight is because, you know, there wasn't a problem with what I've done. Just I was moving some wood and I put it stupidly close to the road just because it was dark and it was probably four in the morning when I was doing it. I, we had gotten our true value truck, uh, delivery truck and I had stuff all around and I moved a pallet of wood kind of close to my apron. And uh, that, you know, I left it there for maybe until about only about eight o'clock or 8.30 in the morning. I forgot, just, just didn't think about it. It was dark and I didn't see it. And then uh, somebody from the town saw it and they looked up my stuff and said, hey, what's this guy doing? And, um, you know, alerted me to it. And so I'm here just to update what my file says, I guess. But um, that was definitely an error, what I did. And, you know, I won't let that happen ever again. Okay. No, I, I don't know. I, I, guess, I guess I understand what it is that, you know, what you're saying. I, um, does anybody else have Tony? Is that the only violation? Could you talk to your mic? The only problem? Uh, the only problem you've had so far? So, y yes, definitely so. But um, I don't even know that. Denise, I, don't, I don't know if there's been any other complaints. I don't know that you're that it's called a violation. I mean, maybe that's what a violation is, but I mean, I just kind of got yelled at for doing it. And so it's an observation. Observation, okay. probably. Because gotcha. a violation, I'm thinking fines and stuff like yeah. that. I didn't, I didn't get in that much trouble, so. <laughs> and my only issue is visibility. You don't, Yeah. you go out of your way to keep things low profile on the sidewalk or? On we'll certainly side. do that. We'll certainly, I will certainly do that. And I'm always aware to that and, um, but you know, what I'm asking for today is to keep stuff out there neat and orderly, and that could be something that's said in there, and that's very, that's the most important thing. I don't, you don't want to put things out there that are going to obstruct visions or anything. I wouldn't, no. Like, that's never happened, and that can't happen. I like where I think you were heading with it, where, as opposed to saying, like, how many types of products you can say where are you allowed to store it, and then you store it at your discretion, no matter what it is. And maybe we can define stuff that are allowed to be close to the snow shelf where people might be looking one way or another on the silo scheme in order to get out into traffic. So I don't know if we are able to do that or if it just works with staff and kind of defines that, but yeah, that makes more sense to me. Yeah, Peter had his hand up and then Tom. Yeah, so Joe, if I understand correctly, you basically want to keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, is it going to expire? I'm, I'm not sure. I, no, the reason, yep, that's the reason why I'm here today, I think, like I said, I think I did something wrong um, a few weeks ago. I put something where I shouldn't have in the art of just juggling things around while I was, you know, and um, and that alerted somebody that, they actually went into my file and said, wait, why is this guy doing this to begin with? And he looked in my file and says, hey, he's only supposed to put three things out and there's like 30 things out. So he came in and started listing like all the things, you know, right is right. It's not, you know, it's not three things. So, um, and he went back and, and, and I, in speaking with Denise, you know, I'm happy to be here because I want it to be something that I don't have to worry that I'm doing something wrong, so. Okay, so it's probably with the zoning laws, I would imagine. And the question is, well, what's appropriately placed or not is kind of up to his discretion, well, right? Well, yeah. Uh, so maybe what we have to do is, along with the numbers of things, sounds like he, he wants more than three, uh, also define 
maybe a little better where you can put stuff, right? So people don't call him out on it if he if he happens to put it you know, a place where someone thinks it's out of place. Yeah, so if I can interrupt one second, it sounds like that, it sounds like I was told that maybe I shouldn't focus on the numbers of things, because that's where it gets messed up. So, but what I hear you saying and a couple other people f on the board were saying, you know, it's about where. So why don't, you know, I'm all up to, to that. Let's keep it at, you know, I'll keep things have to be close to the building. So that's, you know, keeps it out of harm's way there. And I have like a little jetty that I kind of put some wheelbarrows up. If you think that, how would we spell that out? Then I won't do that, you know? Then I'll just keep things against there. And the last third thing that I do, which is just tremendous to sales, but, you know, I won't do it if, the, it, you know, and that is when I put those beautiful, colorful chairs out toward the street. I don't go further than um, the walkway. So I go up to the walkway with the chairs. So there's still plenty they could see and stuff like that. It's not by the snow shelf. It's behind the walkway. But if you even figure, ah, maybe we won't do that. I can even live with that. I just want to be able to, I mean, put stuff out and put it, ar I'll put it around the building. So if I could just summarize. Yeah, go ahead. Let me make sure I understand you. What, what you're suggesting is rather than enumerate this like three yeah. or four or five or six, yep. what you'd like us to consider is allowing you mm -hmm. to put out at your discretion right. whatever you need to put out for the season, yep. uh, but close to the building. Yeah. That, if, if, if that's the simplest way we could put it, I, I think that'd be fine. All right. The only thing I would lose out on if I pick that and where it might be a little bit maybe if you guys want to think about it, is I kind of like to, so if you're looking at the building, I keep things against the building, I kind of like having, since I can't have a sign or anything up there, I like having like either a couple colored chairs or a couple wheelbarrows just kind of from my building toward the, you, you know, so vertical rather than horizontal. Yeah, this is against the cell phone for you, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah you see where those wheelbarrows are? Yeah. That's and they do, you know, I would like to be able to at least keep that. And if, if not, though, it's okay. Okay. All right. Don. Excuse I, me. I took to uh, uh, follow the line of thought that uh, our chairperson and, and Chris Aller had put forth. And looking at what the standard of the earlier permit was, you know, the use of, of the word height seems to be something that, that is quite ill-defined. I'm uh, sorry, the word what? Uh, the use of the term height seems to be yeah. a, a term that's rather, rather ill-defined. Yes. Protrusion, yep. And therefore is kind of inherently challengeable. Uh, and I think it probably... Uh, allows too much discretion on the part of any critic of uh, your establishment, uh, as well as uh, uh, provides, I think, in a sense, uh, more than what you're really asking for. To me, it would seem kind of irrelevant to use the, the term type of, of item. I, I'm a customer, you know, occasionally of, of your establishment, my, my, my main concern would be the access into the store, and particularly when the parking area is just right in front of the store, and there's only a, a very brief amount of territory that's available for parking yeah. in the front of your store. And I've been there where you've had you know, basically items that are really close to where vehicles are parking. And uh, my concern is, is probably more to do with, with safety and uh, the aspect of, of, of people when things begin to get crowded. And I've noticed uh, that things get, tend to get crowded in front of your store, uh, usually from about 3, 3 p.m. on on weekdays um, till your quitting time. So that seems to be where you're, you, know, you have the most activity in terms of people coming in and out. 
Uh, and I think there's, there's some issue of, of, of safety <coughs> with regards to where you've got things placed and uh, the, the, uh, the percentage of space that you're using to, uh, uh, to display the items that you're, you're offering for sale to the public. So taking kind of all that into account, seems to me like you know a more appropriate standard to allow you to do what you want to is you basically eliminate the, the, the term item and go to a more objective standard of you know have a me have a measure of the amount of available square footage for the display and then put a cap on the amount of square feet that you can utilize to display items example, if you have a thousand <coughs> square feet in front of the store to use for display, perhaps cap the amount that you can use for display at say 500 square feet. Some, some standard like that that can be mutually agreeable to, to everyone. That could be. That, that, that could would seem to be a more yep. objective kind of standard with also restrictions or, or, or uh, not restrictions but standards relating to uh, accessibility and uh, freedom from uh, you know, tripping hazards or other safety uh, issues that could be uh, brought into play with regards to where you place things and the, um, and, uh, and the kinds of uh, items that you've got out. I'm, I'm willing to do what, whatever it is that y you guys feel most comfortable with, but um what would so be the, what is the amount of, of square footage in the area that you're using? So we, yep. you mean like linear foot of the building or square it's footage it's of the square foot? Square, square foot. foot of the parking lot? Square, not square footage of the parking lot, but say square footage of the area between the building and the parking area. There isn't any. There isn't much. Well, so wait a second. There's only a few it's feet. There's basically it's the walkway. It's basically right there. Yeah. yeah. So you're so talking. So it's basically, you know, uh, Probably an area about uh, three feet by uh, Ten forty feet. feet or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Right. So uh, if uh, if you you know multiply those measurements uh, and you get a number and then utilize a figure of X percent of that number would be the amount. So let's the just the amount that you could uh, yeah. use for display purposes. So just so I can sort of kind of try and understand that. So if that were the case, three by forty, so that's one hundred and twenty square foot, right? Let's say you said we said came up with fifty percent. That was just an arbitrary figure. I know, I arbitrary, the whole thing, right? So that would be um, sixty square foot, arbitrarily, right? Fifty percent. So sixty square foot. What would that equal in product? Like, how would you determine what? So <laughs> you would you would say that it's all right to fill up sixty <laughs> square foot of a space anywhere with product in that scenario? Only within that that eligible only area, within that eligible, eligible area. area that uh, yeah. you would be using for okay, so display in, purposes. Yeah, in that hundred and twenty square foot, I could fill sixty square foot with stuff like. So how would a wheel? So a wheelbarrow, how many square foot would that take up, you think? That would take up three square foot. So I technically be able to put 20 of them out there. Probably, you know, however many that would fit within that standard, so long as you weren't otherwise creating a, you know, a, a hazard situation for right. people to have access. I kind of understand, but not exactly how. But yeah, but Jeremy. I, I think that could be something that could be worked out with the staff. Yeah. Uh, you know, jointly between you and 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 uh, town staff and work out. We could do you know, that. Precise, you know, a more precise uh, would measurement. It, would, would it be crazy for me to suggest maybe possibly, you know, safety is the number one goal, and I'm just rather than to put numbers into that equation to simply say. Maybe, okay, put product out, put it out against your building and make sure it's safe, neat, and orderly. 
That's two very good examples. Two being? I think okay. you need. I think you need a more definitive. And then, standard. so the last thing I'll say about that is, so if I if we said the safety is the number one goal and keep it against the building, but I do have in front of the doors what you would call a pad, like a, a cement pad. So like where there was an overhang, I guess, where you go into the building and come out of the building. So what if we said something like, you know, safety and everything and keep it against the building and that's okay, but can't be on that pad. Therefore, you'd have complete and total access all the time. No? I just... I think that's probably your, too your starting point for your bargaining position. Okay. I don't think that would be something that where that's we fine. could wind up would be less than that. But, uh, I'm just trying to keep it simple, only thinking that I am not the one, I mean, I will enforce whatever it is, but I'm not the one 100% of the time that's always doing these things. And if I keep it simple, it's always more doable and attainable than if I have <coughs> all, a whole sheet on how to do it. So, you know, but I, I, that's not to say I won't, you know, I will if I have to. Well, like I said, uh, I, I would tend to think that some kind of you know, uh, objective standard could be yep. adopted where the details could be worked out yep. between uh, your council and town staff that, that meet you know, those standards. Okay. Um, in our package, we were given photographs. Is this a proposed layout? Of what you no, want to do? No, that's basically just the, at the time, at the day that the gentleman came and, and okay, you know. Because the one thing that I noticed is, um, that and was I'm exactly pretty right. sure, that is you've uh, blocked the uh, ADA sign, which is a state, a What's that, state the requires ADA, that. The, the and you've placed sign? products in the path from in the parking place and to the door, the path, path to the ADA. I'm just saying that in the future, Yep, we'll that shouldn't that. be happening because okay. someone could write you up on it. Yep, got it. But um, I like what's going on on the other side by the propane and the yep. trash cans and the um, pallet of sand or so forth. Yep. So I have I have some dirt and stuff that is against the building going down. Yeah, I remember that. And and I just keep always keep that there, and I, I don't know if whether or not if that's what we're talking about as well. So, so, I mean, that's why, that's why by keeping it somewhat general, and I don't mean to say that because I have a problem with what you're saying, because I don't. I'm just saying it because I know I do have those dirt piles on the side. And I mean, do I address, is that fall into the same thing or is that just storage or, you know, not sure how we're, <coughs> what we do about that. That it would all be considered um, outdoor display yep. area. Yeah. Okay. Yep. yep. That that's probably why it's best to not give it a definite number and on things. I mean, even though that is one thing, you know, in a three k thing scenario or three, what do we say? Three kind. Three. Uh, three type. Right. Standard. It's kind of like right. a type. Dirt is one type, right? Even though it's, you know, there's different kind of dirts. Yeah, I don't know dirt really what what type means within the scope of, yeah. of the current standard. Yeah. With reference to the approval of April 21st of 2009, it's what, 13 years ago? We have only had one observation, there's been no complaints. Okay. There's been no issues, been no problems. I'm not sure why we're here. We have uh, five bullets on that, me that memo, the approval that we gave in 2009. I think what Joe is asking for is just to continue what he's doing already. Um, with a courtesy uh, visit to us to clarify the observation. There hasn't been any other issues. Um, all five bullets are very specific. Uh, as Commissioner Dean says, no more than three different types of products will be placed on display at one time. That's the first one. If we want to visit anything, maybe we could say the word six instead of three. But there's been no issues here. So I, I'd suggest we, um, you're not looking for any other change other than that. We can endorse that approval and welcome that you're here tonight. You've clarified the issue and move on to other adventures. And I just want to let you know that there's, you know, I take everything I do seriously and, and I understand what's safe and I, I will certainly, no matter what, take that, you know, 
not block my ADA signs, not do, you know, blocking the doors. And then I'm certainly gonna, you know, going forward, just make sure that it's really comfortable and safe out there. I'm grateful you're here, Joe. And it's sort of like, one time I went in there, it's like Macy's, you referred me over to Gimbel's to get some another <laughs> competing product anyway on it. Mm -hmm. If you weren't here, we'd have to go to Cats over in Glastonbury or yeah. Home Depot. So uh, I, I, I enjoy, suggest I love, we move on. I'm not saying this because I'm begging you guys or whatever, but I love this town. I love being here. I love doing what I do, Good. you know, and it's yep. what I do. So it's fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I get, I hear where you're coming from. I, I mean, I, I appreciate what everybody's saying. I, I think, you know, if, if we just kind of go, thank you, have a nice day, we're just inviting the same problem because as we're the zone, Planning and Zoning Commission, we're not the zoning enforcement people. So, you know, if, if a zoning enforcement officer counts four kinds of sand, you know, <laughs> right. you'll be dealing with that. So, I mean, I didn't want to monopolize the conversation out of the gate, but I mean, my, my initial thought was basically to get rid of number one, limiting the number of different types of products just so that we're not sure. counting, you know, our, our folding Adirondack chairs, the same thing as hard plastic Adirondack chairs, you know, how many different kinds of sand are there so that we're not wasting time with that. And, you know, just basically sticking with number two where the products don't extend beyond the car stops. And I think that the products are not in required parking spaces. Otherwise, you know, you're the one who has to bring it out in the morning and take it in at night. Um, you know, you, you're not gonna bring in 200,000 pounds of stuff every day just, just to do that. And, I, you know, I, if, we keep, if yeah. we keep access safe, if we keep parking safe and you know, the parking spots that are required and are, you know, at a premium are all available for customers. You know, I, I don't I don't really see the need, particularly after, you know, 12 plus years of, you know, honoring the intent of um, putting things outside, you know, to, to stick to three. I mean, that, that was kind of where I was going was, you know, more a geographic. And, you know, I, I understand Tom's point about not basically covering every square inch, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, having to have a surveyor come out there to figure out, you know, well, if I push the drills a little closer together, it'll only be 42% of the area on the left-hand side of the building and mm -hmm. instead of 50, it, it's just too much work. Well, in that, uh, again, to, to my benefit, I mean, my th in 2009, I was only here for a year and a half, so, I remember when I came in front of you first to ask to put stuff out because they didn't want anything out there at that time. You know, um, and we said three kinds. They just suggested that and I jumped at it. I was like, yes, I can do business. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I can put stuff out and make it look, because we had, that building had a dumpster out front for like, I don't know, six months and yeah, it had and no it was drips on the side. Yeah, so, it, so basically, I, I it, and you know, I'm from New York and I worked in my dad's hardware store and we always put stuff out. So I was like, I gotta get stuff out. If I, when I don't put stuff out, at least back in those days, people never knew I was open or there. People, nobody would come in. So I put garbage cans out and people came in, you know? It's amazing, like with the chairs and stuff, how I, when I used to put them close to the, uh, road, which I probably won't do after this anymore. You know, keep. It's amazing. It's like turning on a light switch. You put chairs out. Everyone comes in for chairs. They're not out. Nobody buys chairs. Right. It's amazing. Yeah, it's like the guy with the snow blowers and the lawnmowers up the road. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, I don't know. It is a public hearing. Is anybody in the yeah. public? Can I make a comment? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at these pictures, and I'm okay with getting rid of the types, that doesn't make sense to me, that's, that's fine. The only thing that I would be concerned here is from these pictures, it's unclear if you're encroaching on the parking area or not. It's not, it's not clear. Uh, and I could see a, a zoning officer going by and say, oh, I think he's encroaching on it. Right. So I think to make it easier on you and the guys that do this, because you may not be there in the morning and some guy's gonna go out there and they have to put it somewhere and they're just gonna put it somewhere and then it's causing more trouble. Yep. I think what would be best is if you just draw a line 
where this stuff comes up. And then you could try to put an outline with the tie. This is where it could go. And then Absolutely. anybody can just put whatever they want within that outline. Yep. For example, it was just mentioned that you certainly don't want to put anything in front of the handicap sign. So yep. you, you wouldn't have a line there because right. there's a handicap. Right. And the other side, that's okay. So if, if you have three feet from your, your window yep. and it doesn't impede on the handicap or the adjacent parking, yep. you're okay. Yep. Just put it within that area. That's yep. what I would do, just draw a line. Yep. Then that's objective. No, yep. one, no one can say yep. you're not doing what, what you should be doing. Yep. That's my, my suggestion. Yep. Is that okay with you? That's great with me. Um, so, so we could do that. Why don't we, could we come up with um, like a certain amount of feet from the building and I'll draw that line? Yeah, I think you have to just check and see how long your parking is, and then yep. you can take I mean, is there a certain... Um, there's a requirement how much you need for parking. Length. Length? Yeah, there's a, there's a parking length, so anything beyond that, you could store in there. Right, got it. So I'll find out what that length is, and then I'll see what I have now, and that's how much I'd have, and i draw the line. That's, that, yeah. would, that would be the most objective yep. thing you could do. You're not measuring anything, you're yep. just within the line. Yep. Yeah, just looking at it like real quick if, as a suggestion, the, the south face of your building, if you started there and did like a four foot row of the chairs or whatever else you're going to have, as long as it's not too tall, um, that won't impede with the angled parking that's in the front. Right. And then you stop right when the handicapped spot starts yep. Yep. because that's a 90 degree parking spot. So yep. they need to pull out and I assume go the other way. I don't know how people park there. Yeah, no, it's not easy. <laughs> um, but it's there. And I don't know that the town cares all that much about the parking space at the very end because I don't think that's a tenable spot anyway. Yeah, so maybe it. just hatch that whole thing put and let them, spot, yeah. as long as you keep put the hatch there. for the handicap spots so Wide open. can actually right. get it yep. in and out of their car. <coughs> so I mean, that's too pretty large spaces and then you yep. have behind the curb for the garbage cans and yep. the sand and stuff so and yep. i mean you can define that pretty easily with that's words. exactly right <laughs> and and uh, and in addition to that i'd want to leave the dirt along the side of the building where it is yeah, that's fine. Right. yeah. i think you have plenty of space there yeah mm -hmm. we can come up with it that's basically all i want so how would you got to uh, like how would we do that what would we do like how would you guys write that up? Is it w like what would be my requirements at this point? I, I mean, I can't I can't draw those lines and do that stuff now. I think that's right. Springtime maybe kind of. Yeah, I mean, in general, you're gonna demarcate areas that you can store stuff that don't impact the operations of right. the parking lot. Right. And you can determine that just by yep. drawing it out and saying, yep. all right, can somebody. So yeah, you're saying draw, do that, draw it out, and come back and re-show it? Well, okay. I don't know how that yeah. looks I, I don't think you need an engineer. Just go out there no. with a tape measure and just yep. measure it. Do you guys have, does anybody have the length that I'm supposed to have in parking, or should I find that I out? I do have that. You do? Yep. So you'll just... And I'll, I'll help you with the mapping, too. Okay. Yep. And then, so once I had that, I can actually figure it out from there, I think. I think I'm good. I could do that. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. Thank you. That's it. No. No. <laughs> no. It's a public hearing. Is there anybody in the public oh. that wants to comment on this application? I'll say, yeah, this guy's nuts. Sure. Well, come on up. Give us your name and address, and then you can comment. Kathy Clark, 330 Main Street, and I've actually bought chairs, Joe, because the <laughs> chairs were out there. That's all I have to say. I did. Uh, we needed chairs one time, and I went there to buy chairs because I knew you had chairs. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Approved. Now you can buy different kinds of chairs. Right? Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I, bought, I, bought, I bought three different types of products, not including chairs. <laughs> Every time I go. Um, kind of at a loss as to what we should be doing then since you know we're not in a position to draw his application for him do you just want to continue the hearing do you think you'll be able to do that or should we just 
take some kind of action to conclude this and then he can come back at some point when there is a finite plan and we can re review it and waive the application fee and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think that that's the best way to handle it. All right. Yeah, I mean, the, the other thing that I was thinking just to avoid, you know, having to rush and to avoid having, you know, somebody raise the same different types of product question, mm -hmm. you know, for the time being, you know, we could agree to remove condition one mm -hmm. and I'll throw out their products shall not be placed to extend beyond the car stop or in required parking spaces because it shouldn't be. Right. And then, you know, you can take your time to figure out where else you want to put the stuff <coughs> because frankly, I think that gets you wherever you need to be. You're not blocking access. You're not in the parking spots. Yeah. You know, and we're not counting to three anymore. Is that it a becomes an internal su uh, support staff uh, responsibility. Right. Yeah. So is that a motion, Richard? No, we're still yeah, in the sure. public hearing. I, I just wanted to know whether there was no. That fine. makes sense. I think procedurally that makes sense. where yeah. we're going to go. It satisfies all. Sense. All right. So um, I'm going to make a motion to close the public hearing. Then. So yeah. moved. All right. I'll second. All right. Motion by Peter. Second by Tony to close the hearings. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Abstentions. Okay. Uh, someone want to make a motion on the application? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve 212822Z with the elimination of item one from the April 21st, 2009 uh, approval. And did you say we were un not changing the number two? Just changing number two to add beyond the car stops or in required parking spaces. So. Beyond, uh, so all right, so I think that's on there. Too. That's yep. good. <laughs> <laughs> I won't repeat it. I'll second that motion. All right, motion by Ryan, second by Tony. Any discussion? Tom. Yeah, just one one query to that. Well, there's been uh, quite a lot of discussion in the last you know, few minutes pertaining to uh, uh, him or someone doing some you know, measuring and providing some kind of uh, you know, uh, sketch or plan that would be provided and uh, discussed and reviewed by town staff. Uh, I, I would tend to think that would be part of the, the motion as well. So if there's just a applicant to work with staff to demarcate. Delineate. Delineate the area in which outdoor products may be displayed. Mm -hmm. And if a subsequent application is filed for that, we would waive the fee. Right. Right. Okay. Ryan, you accept that? Yeah, I accept I, it. And I'll accept that as a second. All right. Thanks, Tom. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Yep. Thank you. All right. 3.2, public hearing 212722Z, Sully Engineering, LLC, seeking a zoning text amendment to section 512D of the Weathersfield zoning regulations to modify the self-storage facility regulations. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the commission, uh, town staff. For the record, my name is Robert Pryor. I'm a licensed professional engineer and land surveyor with Soli Engineering. Um, here tonight uh, representing um, the contract buyer uh, for 2176, 2180 um, Berlin Turnpike uh, for a uh, proposed amendment to your uh, zoning regulations. What I'd like to do, um, if it's okay, is I'd like to talk a little bit about what we're proposing to do and why we need this text amendment. Um, some of this is probably going to be uh, a little redundant because our, we, we had already heard some of this stuff in an informal sort of pre-application, I think, a couple months ago. Um, but I'd like to get it on the record at this point, if that's okay with everybody. 
what we're what the applicant is proposing to do is develop a climate controlled uh, self storage facility on the subject site. Um, su subject site is presently has uh, existing residential structure on it, um, but is generally undeveloped or uh, you know not fully developed as it could be. Uh, it's it's a pretty unique site in that the area the frontage up on the uh, Berlin Turnpike or the area that fronts Berlin Turnpike is relatively um, narrow in width and somewhat restrictive to development. And the developable area is really sort of down the slope and around the corner um, up next to the uh, wetland area on the site where the site widens out. Um, we feel that the use is, it's a good use for the site um, because it allows development of a site that's, that's generally undeveloped, so it does bring some economic benefit to the town. It doesn't, um, it's not a big traffic generator. Self-storage doesn't create a lot of traffic, doesn't require a lot of pavement, parking. Um, so it's not a, what we would call an intensive use that's gonna generate a lot of traffic up on Berlin Turnpike, but it does allow you to get some development on this property um, for a pretty good sized building and uh, it, 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 we feel that, again, this, the site is well-suited for the use, and we think that the use is well-suited for the site. Now, under the current regulations, you have very specific um, requirements for self-storage in your regulations. Um, and what the thing, the part of the regulations that sort of would not allow us to do what we're proposing to do um, is, the, is the aspect of making this a mixed-use facility. Um, based on what we talked about before, uh, you know, a, a, another, other uses that we could mix with the self-storage use aren't really appropriate based on the site itself. Um, site access isn't, that, isn't great for, you know, uh, an industrial or retail facility. You would need a lot more parking. Um, so it, it wouldn't allow as full a development of the site, and I don't think it would be... Um, as benign a use for this for this property if we went that direction. So, what we're seeking, um, and I just I'll just mention that the site plan essentially is the same site plan that you did see the last time. We did remove the outdoor storage from the site plan. Uh, we did ex we did understand that there were some concerns about the outdoor storage, so we did ultimately remove that, leave a more uh, vegetated buffer between the. Uh, paved area and the, um, the residential uh, development um, to the south. Uh, the pavement that you do see at the end of the building is really what's required for us to be able to maneuver emergency vehicles in and out, uh, fire trucks and, and things of that nature. Um, so it's about the minimum we can put just because we need to get, if a fire truck comes down there, it needs to be able to turn around and maneuver and get back out. Um, so the Let's pull up the regulations, the actual regulation itself. So the portion of the regulations that we're seeking to amend is uh, 5.12D of the self-storage facility uh, regulation. And I think what I, the first thing I would say is that the part D is, is it's all discre it's discretionary and it's still going to be discretionary. So if we, if we, if you grant us the, the, just the change to the zoning regulations, the text, it doesn't mean that this is, becomes an as of right thing. You still have the discretion to not waive the mixed use requirement if for whatever reason you saw fit to do so. Um, it still allows you that discretion. What we are trying to do is we are trying to Right now, the, the ability for you to waive those, that portion, the mixed use component, um, is limited to existing buildings that are um, essentially adaptive reuse of existing buildings. So the first thing that we're asking is that you could, you could, you could, you would have the discretion to waive the mixed use component for a new building, um, which is what we're trying to do. And then, as we go down the list, there's some requirements that we that um, that you require with regard to that that it has to, that uh, the development would have to meet. Which we we haven't removed any of the requirements. We've added some actually added some additional requirements 
that 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 a new building would have to would meet and and those requirements are one it would have to have direct access from the berlin turnpike so i think that was a, that was something that was requested or discussed last time um, that we were here b that it would that it would be um, located on a site with a minimum of 10 acres of property so we're not looking at small sites these would be rather large sites um, that we would preserve 50% of the site as undeveloped, uh, that would stay undeveloped. So on a 10 acre site or greater, you'll be looking at least five acres plus that would remain as undeveloped site area. And um, that the building would be located more than 250 away, feet away uh, from, the right, from the right of way, which is from the Berlin Turnpike. So, you know, all those things, I think, are consistent with what you are trying to do with the, with the self-storage uh, regulation in that they do, they do, not, they still would never allow a self-storage only building to be placed right up against the Berlin Turnpike. They, 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 you would still have to have a, any site that this would apply to um, would have to have a buffer you know, a, a 250 foot buffer away from the Berlin Turnpike. And, um, and, and, and we looked at it and we, we identified, I think, one other site that this might apply to. Um, there may be others, but we, we, were, we identified basically one site. So it's really gonna apply to a limited number of sites anyway. Um, but it would allow us to, again, it would allow us to develop the site as we're proposing. Um, and it would allow for, uh, you know, the, you know the economic development of a site that's that's a that's a challenging site, and it's set and is set. And I I think that you know you've probably seen some some different proposals for this site that you know would probably generate more traffic and and just not be I think is good um, you know for the for the town, and I think this allows a like I say a rather benign use on a on a site that's kind of sat vacant for quite a long time. Um, and it, you know, there certainly would be an economic benefit for the town. I'm open for questions. Um, the other, the other site that you located is that. We can. I think we can. I think we, can, I think we have an. Is we're going to be behind the self <laughs> behind the other self storage. It's on 79 Progress Drive. I believe is the address. The well, that doesn't have direct access to the Berlin Turnpike. Turn it right has here. frontage, technically, so it could have it could obtain direct access. Right, you couldn't get across the wetlands to get there. Correct. So <laughs> even though the site is possible, the relatively small area is actually entirely wetlands. Okay. So essentially, it's a I don't want to say impossible, but <laughs> it's a highly permitting, it's a permitting nightmare. Is what you're saying. <laughs> Correct. I, I hate to say I hate to say that it only applies to this site because there may be sites that we haven't identified, but yes. When we looked at it, that's the site that we found. That, and that's behind self storage, right? Um, I'm not 100. I'm not 100 percent sure about that. Okay. What, why is it just Berlin Turnpike? Could it be in the side of Steen? Why are they? Is it just the Berlin Turnpike? What is it? So why do they have words that says Berlin Turnpike? We, you know, we're, we we have no problem of, of not limiting you're, it that you're, way. You're asking for a general regulation change. You can't just change Berlin Turnpike. I mean. It could be Silestine that would have those requirements applicable, right? That could be another site there. I, I don't I, know. I think I thought that we, we may have gotten the impression last time we were here that that's that, that there was some there was the Berlin Turnpike was the main point of concern. We're not we don't that that was something that we got from our discussions here, so we may have misunderstood. We can certainly No, you didn't misunderstand. <laughs> we can certainly dis we can certainly not limit it to the Berlin I mean, Turnpike. <laughs> no, I, I think this is this is fine. And if somebody wants to come in and amend it For to refer to the Silestine, we can discuss it at that time. I mean, I, I think, you know, frankly, this was meant to allow the development of this particular right. parcel. Right. Very specific. Hmm. Yeah. Fortunately, there's another one. Otherwise, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least theoretically. Yeah. <coughs> Anybody have questions? Just to clarify one mm -hmm. question, B, the 250 feet from any right of way, do you mean the frontage? Do you mean from the access road? 
from the from the actual right of way, which means the we, in this case it would be the Berlin Turnpike right of way. That's not all boundaries and easements. No, no, that it would be. So it would be from the Berlin. It would be from the Berlin Turnpike essentially, or if it was a corner, if it happened to be a corner lot that was a local street that connected to the Berlin Turnpike, you'd also have to be 250 feet away from that street line as well. Yeah, I mean, I had made a note to add any highway right of way just so that it didn't include like, you know, somebody's electric right of way or something like that. Yeah, it'd be like an on access lane or something. I'm, I'm curious to see if there's any comments or explanations for from town staff with regard to this uh, proposal. Um, I, I assume, Denise, you've had a chance to review this. And do you have any comments? And I'm particularly uh, interested or concerned if there are any potential unintended consequences that we can foresee from this besides those other than those that have been uh, articulated by the applicant. Uh, not in addition to what has been identified for the record. I see this is a rather you know, benign change uh, to the regs. It's not contrary to either the spirit of the regulations or the, uh, you know, the, the plan of development. The only thing that I would um, <coughs> make note of is the um, comments from uh, Krog that they found uh, no apparent conflict with the regional plan. Uh, however, due to the broad language used in the revision, um, staff would advise caution when proceeding with the petition uh, to maintain alignment with mixed use efforts in the region. And how could that be achieved with respect to this uh, proposal? Any language change? from what's put proposed or, uh, yeah. I mean, I think inherently with the type of application being a special permit, it would be a case by case basis um, for you to review. Yeah. So I, I'm getting the impression that you don't have uh, severe concerns about any serious consequences for uh, contraindicating, contraindicating any contraindications to a current plan of development or, or the spirit of the regulations? Uh, not in terms of what's being proposed. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Anyone to the left? Yeah, I think just to, to follow up on, on Tom's comment that, you know, in addition to being a special permit, I mean, we have to make the four findings here to kind of waive the requirement of mixed use, which is, you know, the objective, the ideal, and so forth. Um, you know, but this provides us a little flexibility in situations where, particularly sites that, you know, I think most of us have been here long enough to have seen some other proposals that really are unfeasible you know, or somewhat unsafe, um, you know, in, in varying ways in that, uh, you know, this type of use is probably more consistent with what we would want to see in that area than, you know, dense residential or something like that down in a hole off the Berlin Turnpike. Yeah, in, in reviewing this, I found myself being amenable to the proposed change. So I was concerned if there's anything that I missed or, or, or didn't conceive of in, in terms of my own review uh, of the application. So. No, I know. I, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's one of those things where, you know, you look at something and it looks good, and then it's like, well, what am I missing here? Um, so it's, you know, we have these conversations. We're just... Uh, approving these regulation changes, but there's really nothing being offered other than a, a concept, right? I mean, we could back back away from this and nothing could happen there, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, we, we revised the regulations probably 15 years ago to accommodate the possibility of certain kinds of mixed-use residential down there, and we, you know, had 
particular requirements for properties bisected by town lines located on you know roads that start with B and <laughs> things like that that you know <laughs> um, you know made, made it obvious what we were talking about and, and that just didn't come to pass yeah. well, when do you expect to come in with the site plan um, we're, we're very far along on the site plan so we would expect that uh, we would be in in the next um, 30 to 45 days with the site plan application. Thank you. Is the results again why you want to include highlights in this and is that a do? Um, just to clarify that we're talking about the a highway right of way, you know, of a, of a street rather than, you know, for example, if, you know, the property up above it has a right of way to access the back of the other property that's not a public right of way, you know, maybe that's a better word, public right of way. State non-access land or something. Well, I don't know what that is. That is the difference between could, county and state property. I might suggest that. Well, I'd want to include the yeah, I might suggest that instead of any, we would say the public. Or just any public right of way? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, this is also a public hearing. Does anybody have anything they want to uh, come and say? Right. If not, this is a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. All right, motion by Tom, second by Peter to close the hearing. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, hearing's closed. Does someone want to make a motion on the application itself? I'll make a motion to approve 2021-2722-B, seeking a zone text amendment in section 512-D of the Zoning Code Zoning Regulations to modify self-storage facility regulations with reference to page 5 in the bold specific items under letter D, construction of new buildings, as well as uh, section 4, construction of new building housing Fully self storage or related uses with letters A, B, C, and D, inclusive of D being located more than 250 feet from any public right of way. I'll second. All right. And the reason being that it's consistent with our plan of conservation and development. Okay. Is there any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Next item. This is not a public hearing. It's a pre-application review of 133 Main Street. I'm Michael Clark. And I'm Kathy Clark. Um, we re recently purchased 133 Main Street and um, we're seeking a change of use for part of the property. Um, right now there's, um, there's been an existing business in the Red Barn section of the property. Um, there's a section of the residential structure that was originally created for commercial use. Um, that was the Enchanted Heart for a number of years. Um, and uh, we're looking to um, reuse that space for mercantile use, um, as well as create an additional space um, comprised of the first three rooms closest to Main Street. Um, and we're just here um, looking for guidance in the application process and, you know, to kind of get in front of any potential concerns or anything that could hinder a successful application. So the application would be for a change of use? Yes. Okay. Um, 
just a, a little more overview, we really have um, no intention of changing the exterior of the property very much. Um, it's suffered a period of neglect, so we just intend on refurbishing, um, you know, replacing the roof, painting, replacing any rotten wood, keeping everything the same color as it is now, no additional landscaping. Um, so, um, you know, it's important to us to kind of keep things as historic as they are. Um, so as we move forward with the project, hopefully our, our hopes is to avoid making any unnecessary changes to the structure of the, the building. What, what type of commercial activities do you anticipate? Um, so we've put some feelers out. We're also business owners in town, and we know a lot of people in the, the community that have kind of shared ideas with us. We've had, um, you know, different things such as uh, one bookstore that's interested in one of the spaces. Um, today I met with a couple that um, has like a vintage homeware business. Um, we've had um, a couple that does like cake mixes and granola and things like that. Um, we have a children, someone who's interested in opening a children's clothing boutique is coming to look at the spaces. Right, so, so kind of like low impact retail kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no cooking. Brew no, pub. <laughs> no, <laughs> no brew pub. No. We, uh, no, we just would like to see some more small business retail down that end of the street. Um, seems like it's in accordance with the town plan that we've read up on in the past. Um, so we're just looking to do whatever's easiest to maintain all of the originality in the house. Um, you know, so we're not looking to have any sort of like no food service or anything like that. No cooking, no open flames. Um, I assume there would be dedicated um, resident parking. Yeah, so because you there's a discussion about the parking. So just yep. maybe. Yeah, so the parking lot we actually measured um, today, and I realized in the letter that I wrote for this meeting that um, I actually missed one parking spot. So there's already seven parking spaces delineated, um, one of which has a handicap sign from prior use. Then there's a, a garage which is um, residentially zoned. It's past the line of the uh, village business district. So that would be specifically for the residential use. Um, but a question that we had about the parking was the lot is 58 feet, 58 and a half feet um, in one direction and 50 and a half feet in the other direction. And I just didn't know if that would be an option to kind of um, make a little better use of the space that we already have to include a couple of extra spots there um, alongside the red barn, like directly up against it. I don't know if you've seen the aerial shot or familiar with the So the property. parking lot is that dimension? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Not like the whole lot. No, no. no. Just oh, okay. the parking lot. Right. The current yep. existing okay. parking lot. Yep. So... There's never been any parking like right alongside the red barn, but I, you know, if we needed to meet some additional parking requirements, it was just a discussion that we had today as a possibility. We met with um, the fire marshal last night who, you know, gave us some guidance about the initial plans that we had that I included in the email for tonight um, and basically um, he suggested that based on the needs of the stairwells we wouldn't need to use the front stairwell for the residents um, at all. I was initially thinking that could be like an emergency exit but he suggested kind of blocking that section off at the top of the steps to completely separate the the residential from the business um, and then the door that's on the south side of the house um, that would become like the main entrance and exit for that one commercial space that would be the front three 
um, it's got more of a modern kind of lock and door handle from the outside. So. Yep. I think. Is this is a one unit upstairs? Yes. Yeah, just by your layout, right? That yeah. Was, so. You do. Yep. It would just be one residential that would be, um, the entrance would be towards the back of the property. Mm -hmm. It would have the kitchen and a little eat-in area downstairs. Upstairs would be the bedrooms, home office, living room. I just, yeah. just wanted to say, like, I think this use, thinking about all the other applications that have come up and any of the issues that people might have had with this I don't really see any anything jumping out at this this wouldn't even be it would it would add to the it's like the same type of use that you're seeing along the roadway I think it fits within you know sort of that little village center um, and yeah typically there's always like a parking conversation there's always a people constantly coming in and out and this doesn't seem like that much of an impact compared to what we've had in the past. I just feel like this would go through pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, and, and it seems like it would be normal retail hours mm -hmm. rather than having to worry about, you know, midnight headlights in the backyard <laughs> and things like that other than just yours. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one question I had was about the bathroom situation. Um, do mercantile uses for retail shops require a public bathroom? The state code requirement is it's so. in the store code. Okay. Is that something that we could potentially seek exemption for from the state? Through the, through the, state the law in our jurisdiction. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it would be the state building official. I believe so. Do you have any comments, Cindy, or Dean? No, I was just saying that if, if it's required, you can ask for a variance from the building inspector okay. or the state. But and do we seek those variances prior to the application for planning and zoning change of use, or that could be after? It would be during the building permit process after planning and zoning approval. Okay. Do you know what type of business you want to put in here, or is it? We don't open? know. Um, We've had a lot of interest already, and you know, we lean towards small retail shops, like small business owners. Um, kind of feel like there's enough office space right in the area there. We'd like to see some more foot traffic of like people patronizing small businesses down that end of the shop. Next door, you have um, Neil Walsh, the goldsmith, and. Um, you know, it'd be nice to even bring more traffic down that way a little bit for him um, and just kind of add to what's already there, so. If I just could give you some advice. Um, <laughs> uh, I think it'd be worth your while to check the ADA requirements when you're at the building because it could wreck when you run into some serious money that you may or may not anticipate. Yeah. Before you decide to do anything. Yeah. And, and that'll be what really triggers an HDC review. Okay. Um, so this would be considered a change of use um, and it would be a special permit for a mixed use residential commercial as part of that process. Um, they are required to come before you for a pre-application review. Um, my question to you would be based on the requirement for additional parking, which I envision to be about five additional spaces. They would either need to seek a waiver or um, and l allow, as they're indicating in their letter, for um, the parking to be absorbed by public parking, or they would need to um, have a survey done and show the parking on their property. So that's part of the conversation that I want. Yeah, and I guess a concern is whenever whenever an application comes up, it's what might it be in the future when they're not necessarily owning the building anymore or something in however many years. Somebody could say if this is like a really busy coffee shop and there's a lot of in and out and now we have, like we approved it for one thing and then that. So I, yeah, I guess I can, I can see 
the, the what about kind of conversation. Is there, I don't see a way around it though. <laughs> well, I mean, if, if, the, if the approval is for, you know, mixed use with, you know, 2,315 square feet of retail commercial space as opposed to right. something else, then at least, you at know, least we get the opportunity to have, okay. you know, we want to change it to food right. service or, or something else. Okay. Um, so five spaces in addition to the seven or eight that they have? Uh, depending, I mean, I, I haven't depending actually seen, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, but there's a possibility that there would be a need for additional spaces and I just, you know, want to get a handle of that ahead of time in terms of submission re requirements. Are we going to expect an updated survey or, you know? Well, I guess just to put it in context, what is it now? Um, what is what now? The property being used for now. Fully residential. Okay. And uh, the Red Barn is not residential. Yeah. So it's got a business there and it's got the red, the the other building is all residential currently. Right. Right. So has that two separate been, buildings. Has that ever been commercial? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So there was. Um, the enchan sorry, the Enchanted Heart was there from okay. I think the '60s to mid '90s yeah. on that side, and then prior to that, I believe Neil Walsh told us the Enchanted Heart was actually inside the house structure itself um, prior to that. Yeah, it depends on how far back you go, yeah. looking at the history. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I was just looking how whether it predated the current regulations. Or yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it was last used commercially in maybe like 96 or 97. Right. And is the question, is, do we need it? I mean, is there enough room for us to park? Is that the 52 and 58 feet that you mentioned? Yeah. You know, yeah, that's the space that you can build we additional do, parking? We have alongside the red barn, um, that's 58 feet long. The whole lot is 50 and a half feet wide. The whole parking, There's parking lot. The whole parking lot, sorry. And only one side of the parking lot is used for parking currently. So there's a whole other side of the lot that has no, you know, spaces delineated, nothing painted, where I feel like, you know, I'm not an expert at outlining a parking lot, but there's at least room for a couple more spaces there, um, potentially, if needed. But I think, you know, for the ease of people pulling in and then backing out to come out of the, the lot, it, we could meet the requirement by relying on the public parking to absorb those five extra spaces that the square footage would require based on, you know, the current code. That would be my preference. Yeah, I mean, and then you start getting into, you know, is the parking lot in the VB zone or is it in the part of the lot that's residential? And well, you that's know, do you have buffers because of the buffer requirement? Okay, yeah, it is all, the whole parking lot is in the village business zone. Um, okay. As far as I can tell, the, the, um, the residential section starts at the garage that's in the back okay. and goes beyond that. Um, I know there's, you know, been parking studies lately and plans for enlarging the parking and everything. So hopefully that would, you know, work in our favor. Um, the other thing that uh, we were discussing is the, the demand on the parking in that particular area due to the, the restaurant there seems to be greater in the evening. And we're looking at, you know, more daytime kind of businesses. So I don't know if that could also be a kind of consideration when we're looking at asking that the public parking be able to absorb those five spots. The uh, number of bedrooms, the, the top plan you gave us or the floor plan has a study laundry room, primary bedroom, another bedroom and an office. Would that be dedicated maybe as a two bedroom versus a three to, to eliminate potential two or three parking places being used by future people on that second floor? Yeah, we're looking at a two bedroom. Two bedroom um, only, so that might be part of your submission for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, what the previous owner used as a bedroom, we'd be looking at using as a living space. Because we'd be removing the living space from downstairs, so it would move upstairs. So Denise, you're asking us about parking, right? So 
would like to hear from us about should we even clarify what the parking or not? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> no, I'm asking if I should require as part of their submission for the special permit application a survey showing the five spaces on their property or if um, as they are indicating in the letter if they could um, use the public parking that exists to absorb the potential five additional spaces that they may need. Yeah, I think that the that is probably the latter is probably fine, but I think it would be helpful to have like a plot plan showing where the existing parking is so that we can kind of intelligently okay. say, yeah. no, there's no point in paving mm -hmm. the entire backyard for hypothetical spaces. Yeah. Just so that, you know, it's an informed decision on our part. But Definitely. Make sure it's the scale, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Has there been any survey work done, as far as you know? No. Not under our ownership. Um, and we didn't receive any prior surveys. Um, but I can certainly, you know, draw something that is easily seen. Um, Denise showed me an aerial picture of the property um, recently, so that would be helpful that I could just kind of. You probably also have a plot plan in town with the condition dimensions on for. Yeah. 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 I mean, a lot of people do that. They have the 1958 map that they just draw on. Yeah. Yeah, you can grab like survey quality aerials. Mm -hmm online there's like a Yukon site for that okay so I mean there's there's ways that you'll be able to get something in this scale yeah great yeah I saw um, that the requirements for width are about seven and a half to nine feet I think so there's definitely seven spots along one side the south side of the parking lot currently yeah, I mean, and then you do the math, you know, it's like 9 by 18, but you have to have the it's turning on the new Yukon right. drives. And, and that could be why the other side hasn't had any parking right. alongside the barn. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anybody else? All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Next minutes of December 2nd. George isn't here. Nobody makes any comments because George isn't here. It must there be only perfect. Three of us who were here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's pass on the thing, I guess. Okay. Was that a Wednesday? No. Here's my memory. I can't remember. Why I just want to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Staff reports? Anything? Um. As a follow-up to the conversation we had at the last meeting, um, there is an application that will be coming in for 662 Silas Dean Highway um, for the U-Hauls as an accessory use. Um, I have a meeting tomorrow with the applicants for 708 Silas Dean for the expansion of the convenience store to discuss uh, the parking requirements. Um, we did get a building permit submission for the uh, new Starbucks at 1862 Burling Turnpike. Uh, the Mylars have been signed, not filed, though I um, anticipate that to happen probably early next week. Um, the Mylars were filed for uh, 164, 166 Main, that's for the Linoches. Um, they are working through some issues with the building department um, and hopes to get the um, foundation uh, permit approved. <coughs> um, I do anticipate um, issuing the RFP for the plan of development in the next few weeks. So I did think we should maybe have a conversation about having a subcommittee. I don't know if any of you guys are interested, but we can probably know tomorrow. I'm down. Um, there was also a building permit filed a few days ago for Duro Market to do um, minimal um, work in the uh, 1301 Silas Dean Highway, the former Chips. 
And um, that's really all I have to report, unless uh, you guys have any questions about anything specific. I would like to mention that the one item I sent you in, uh, Luma. Just, just so everybody's aware, that at the last EDSC meeting, it was brought to my attention that uh, at least it was thought by, by one of the members that uh, Luna Pizza had agreed to not use Uber and DoorDash and that they would strictly use their own drivers because of the concern they had for parking and people not knowing what, remember the whole discussion? Mm. But if you go to their website, apparently I didn't go, but uh, this individual said, if you go to their website, you can see that they're actually advertising the use of DoorDash and other delivery services, which they thought would be in violation of what we approved. So I asked Denise to check and see if that was part of the approval or not. And I don't think it was, right? It was not a condition of approval. It, it was definitely part of the conversation. So I would have to go back to the YouTube. And I mean, I think that they indicated the use of those services would be minimal, but I, d I don't know that they said it would be non-existent. No, my, my vague recollection is that they said that they were gonna rely on their own people or something like that. But if I want Luna Pizza right now, it's Glastonbury from DoorDash. I don't have a Wethersfield option, so. Said, so maybe they were wrong. So you can order they were on the wrong site. <laughs> Does anybody want a pizza? <laughs> you can it's order closing online soon. for Wethersfield, but you, I went and picked it up anyway. Right. I don't I'll, I'll look in that. DoorDash. We'll look so into that a little bit more. Maybe they looked at the wrong website yeah. and yeah. brought it up as an issue and it wasn't an issue. I'll and get back to you. Well, now Luna is yeah. multiple locations, so. Yeah. All right, anybody else? Public comment? <laughs> by, by DoorDash? By, yeah. Sponsored by. Friday at 5? Morgan Park has a free spot. <laughs> Friday at 5. I love it. Is it free pizza? I would hope free pizza and beer, but I don't know. <laughs> All right. Is that enough? Motion to adjourn? I'm, I'm all ears. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> all in favor say aye. 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 Thanks. There's always something else, and I'm always like, every time I'll say, like, motion to adjourn, it'll just be like, well, we have like three more applications to talk about. <laughs> I'm like, dude. Yeah, then it was like, oh, it was to say all <laughs> yeah, oh, darn, I was meant to ask about something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's uh, I'm trying to think of when it was. It was oh, so you probably the uh, uh, second Friday in uh, December. Sometimes I drive, but I ordered you know, takeout the from there. That yeah. by the 15. Yeah. Yeah. Know, three yeah. empty spaces yeah. right yeah. in front yeah. of the yeah. room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good to see you. To fill that, that need. So. Good. Good. Next time we're on uh, All right. Uh, we see gentlemen, next time. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Just gonna, we're just going to have to.